Hey everyone, it's me, Tim, and today I want to talk about quest implementation. Christy Tenace 6130, I hope I got that name right, asks, Hi Tim, can you please explain more about a, how a quest system is created in code? Do you use a database or just classes? There are variables only or entire records, and how do you change the quest states and do branching depending on the various state paths provided and chosen by the players? Good question. And let me let me for a second just say why this is such a good question. I love that it is very specific. You didn't ask, hey, how do you make quests? Because I don't know if you mean code. I don't know if you mean design. I don't know if you, by design you mean the idea of the quest or the specific implementation, how narrative factors in. No, very specific. How do you code it? It's also a good example of asking a question about something that I forgot I ever didn't know. And this is going to sound strange, but let me just tell you how these things work. And it took me a long time to figure this out. When you first start in the game industry, you don't know anything. So you have a question about everything. After a while, you start to do these things. You learn like, okay, this is good. I'm going to use this thing I've learned. After decades, you forget that you didn't even know that thing. So it never would have occurred to me to talk about this because I, I just assume well, people have played a bunch of RPGs. They know how this works. So it's something that a friend told me once. He said, one nature of becoming an expert in something is early on in becoming an expert, you realize all the stuff you don't know. And then later in being an expert, you forget all the things you didn't ever know. You forget the fact that you didn't ever know those things. So this is a good question. I want to talk about it. This is, I'm going to talk about a system. We used it in Fallout. It was the first time we'd ever done anything like it. So when I sat down to write the design docs on this section in Arcanum, I formalized all of this. And I'll talk about in states and how the states are adjusted. But I've used this particular formulation ever since. It was used in Arcanum. It was used in Temple of Elemental Evil. It was used in Vampire Bloodlines. We were going to use something similar in Wildstar. Definitely used it in Outer Worlds. So let me talk about how it's coded. First of all, Every quest is has a set of states it can go through. And this could be an enumeration. It's unknown, meaning the player's never heard of it. Mentioned, meaning the quest has been mentioned, talked about, but the player was non-committal about it. Accepted, meaning they accepted the quest and that's all they've done. Achieved, meaning the objective of the quest was done but they haven't turned it in some quests those may be the same thing but i don't know i'll leave that to the narrative designer and then the fifth state is completed meaning the objective or objectives and i'll talk about that have all been done have all been achieved and now the quest is and the quest has been turned in rewards have been given it's completed there's actually a sixth state called botched which is any time, actually, you can set botched on any of the states except completed. Botched is, a spe is handled specially in code. I use it as a flag on the quest state. So quest state is one of those enums I just mentioned, one of those five ones. And then you have botched. And that's because if an unknown quest gets botched, depending on UI design, you may or may not tell players about it. I've seen some games when a quest I've never tried to get, didn't even know about, is botched, and I'm told about it when, like, the quest giver gets killed. I've also seen games, and I've made games myself, that if you kill a quest giver, you, all the quests they give you internally are botched, but you're never told. If, you, if, if they're only in the unknown state. For mentioned, accepted, and achieved, if they've been put in your quest log, sometimes mentioned quests go in quest log, sometimes they don't, then it gets moved to a botched section. However, once a quest is completed, it's done, it's over. It's moved in the complete section. If you try to set the botched flag, it doesn't let you. So let's talk about that. So I do all this in a quest class. The quest class has as variables, the state, which is probably an enum, and the botched flag. And that's it. So let's talk about the methods that you can put on this class. And yeah, I'm talking C++ just because that's the last time I implemented this. So you can set a state so you on that particular quest you call set state not botch though so those are the five 
ones I have. Advancement is enforced here. Quests can only move forward. You can't go from mentioned to unknown. You can't go from achieved to mentioned. So when that state is called, it only allows the quest state to advance from an earlier one to a later one. Um, but also, um, once the quest has been completed, calls to this, this set state are ignored. So you've completed it. I'm not, it, it won't accept any more state commands on that quest. You can also call get state. Now get state is where you say, if that botch flag is set, you return the botched state. Otherwise you just return the state that it is. Now in here, you can also decide if I don't tell the player that an unknown quest is botched, if the state is unknown, you don't care what botched is. You just return unknown. So that's something you have to decide in your game how you're going to handle that. And then there's a third uh, or fourth, depending on how you look at it, a uh, set of methods for botching and unbotching a quest. When you botch it, it turns on this, the flag. And when you unbotch it, it turns off that flag. Now, and again, these methods don't work if the state's already been set to complete it. So now you have a basic functional quest class. How do you implement that? Well, I make a quest array that is managed by a quest manager, which welcome to C++, you're gonna be making a singleton here. It's the thing I don't like about the language. Every time I've made, well, not every time, but frequently when you make classes of things, you have to end up making a singleton manager for those classes. And this is no different. So you just make a quest manager. The quest manager basically reads in um, the quest data and is man it, it, it reads in and saves that array. And it, so it manages all of them. So that way it has a load save. So when the game says, hey, you need to save this person's game, the quest manager writes out the state and botch flag of all the quests. And then you have to, you have to put the set state, get state, and botch and unbotch as script calls. So you basically expose them to your scripting language. I always have scripters handle the quest state. And the reason for that is it can be changed in so many ways. Like I said, you kill the quest manager, botch. You walk by someone on the street and they're just talking about something. You know, like, I heard there's bandits down by the river. Mentioned. You are in a dialogue with someone and they're like, would you, did you hear about the bandits? Mentioned. Would you deal with them? Player says yes. You set it to accept it. These have to be done in scripts because there are just so many places throughout the code that they can be changed. It's really hard to systematize that. So it's that's the one thing I'm like, here, here you are. It's probably, these script calls tend to be caught a lot by narrative designers, but also by your level designers who write scripts. Now, you notice I have missed out a few things. I'm going to talk about some advanced um, quest stuff you want. Maybe you want multiple objectives. So to do this quest, you have to do these three things. Just add extra variables into the quest class for those extra objectives. And there, when you call set state on achieved, you have to actually give it what objective that you're achieving. So um, set state takes an optional parameter which has to be there if you're calling achieved. Or you could just make a separate one and say set state doesn't work for achieved and set state achieved is its own thing that requires a parameter. You can decide at this point whether or not um, these have to be done in order or if any of these objectives are optional. And then what you can do is you can do flags to control that. If, if they have to do A, B, and C in order, then you can't set B as achieved before you set a. If it's A and B and C is optional, then there, well, there's a rule that once you've achieved all of the objectives, the quest will return completed for its state. It will return completed even if the optional ones aren't done. And then it will, once you have all of them, um, it can be completed. So yeah, I'm sorry, it doesn't return completed. It can be set to completed if all of the non-optional states are marked as achieved. So I, I kind of just wanted to throw it out at the end as like, here's some things you could do to make a more modern 
uh, quest system with multiple states and optional states. But just to get started, I would do what I originally told you about, which is just make a quest, which, you know, go get the crown of diamonds, which is hidden in this cave. You go get the crown, it goes for mentioned, you accept it, you go and when you, as soon as you pick up that crown, it's achieved. As soon as you go back to the quest giver and turn it in, complete it. Everything else from there is kind of an advanced set of things you can do, but they're not that hard. And I think if you're a programmer or you're a designer, you can just write that in and your programmer will know what to do if you want to add states in order or optional states. But in general, I've used this structure in so many games. It works well, it's tested, it's tried and true, and it will do pretty much everything that an RPG player expects from their quests. So I hope that answered your question, Christy Tenace, and I hope that's how you, you say your name.